What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 1017 of FRL. I'm bringing the intro with JD. Can't bring the energy. <laughs> got JD and Chuck Bozak with us today. Talk to us. I'm only here 30 minutes, boys. So let's get after it. Yeah, uh, Christian's flying home, so he's not uh, on the show today. Ben is staying in D.C. Um, an extra extra day or two to uh, yep. drain the swamp. <laughs> I'm draining it all, pulling the plug out. <laughs> oh, Ben, how was uh, how was last chance? Um, what well, was I say? Good and bad. Uh, we had got long weave to qualify. She crushed the competition on Saturday. It was really really great to see. Uh, None of our high school guys got it done. And, you know, I guess maybe it is an over expectation that they're going to have as much success against the senior level. And you see other high school kids doing it. You think maybe they can do it. And um, they fought hard. They fought hard, but none of them came out on top. Um, but it was a great experience. I thought they all wrestled pretty well, your guys, though. Yeah. Aiden was a little not warmed up for that McFadden match. And I was, uh, we, yeah. we had a discussion about that. And hopefully it will never happen again. But a little shell shocked. High schooler Jax Forrest did make it at 57 kilos. Yes. And my goodness, he put a whooping on NATO in the finals, even 10-0. Really good. What do we make of this yeah, guy? I, he was kind of impressive all day. Um, I don't remember who he beat up. I should go find it. He beat up someone first round, and it was like, okay, I mean, that guy's pretty good, you know? And you're thinking, okay, well, you know, yes, that guy's pretty good, and Jax beat him up, but there's going to be someone better than that, you know? Uh, but I'm pretty sure if I remember right, Jack's kind of rolled all day. Um, well, and, and NATO rolled all day too. Didn't yeah. he? Yeah. NATO was pretty dominant yeah. to the finals. Yes. Yeah, so NATO, NATO rolled all Courtney? day also. Uh, Courtney, yeah, he 10 out Courtney. Courtney Knox was a crazy match. And it was, uh, I want to say, I was actually stepping on the mat to coach. And I want to say initially Knox had won the match and they went to challenge. Mm -hmm. And then he, he had lost to Courtney. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think Jack's force the, the, the man, he's the class of this bracket. It kind of, honestly, I'm interested to see how well he's going to do at the trials. Now, I wouldn't not be shocked at all if he won a couple matches. Um, I'm not going to predict he makes a team or anything, but I think he'll do well for himself. Who do you think he can't beat in the in the 57 bracket? You know, I was thinking sometimes we we watch something like this and we think, oh my god, he's so amazing, and we you know, so we, and we think like, well, given what we saw there, it's hard to imagine him losing anyone else, right? Um, he did lose to a high school kid in Pennsylvania like a month ago, um, <laughs> right? He lost to Davino twice. So, you know, it's like, will you match him up with someone like a Thomas Gilman? I think there's a chance Thomas Gilman just makes him look bad, you know, mm -hmm. or Spencer Lee. Like, they're just too powerful. Like, I think he's really good in all the wrestling positions. You're saying but NATO's not powerful? He, he is, but, I mean, NATO hasn't had near the senior level success that Thomas Gilman has. Right. Obviously, like it has it that those aren't really comparable. I also thought, but I, I don't know why I thought NATO had retired. I think he, he did. I think he did for a while because, yeah, we talked. I talked to him and he said he was coaching. He had talked to me about coaching for a while. And then he said he was back currently at the uh, Ohio RTC training full time for 2024. Yeah, because he was um, coaching in however you say it falls, Chuga. Right? Cuyahoga. Uh, Cuyahoga. Uh, Cuyahoga. <laughs> I like Cuyahoga. It's a CH, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> you know what I You know what I was thinking, though? I was thinking, I, I made this comment last week about Jax Forrest and Bo Bassett. Um, and obviously, Bo was, I mean, I guess we'll say not quite as impressive given the final, but he was very impressive. Um, how was, how was Jax Forrest not going to get bored in high school in the next two years? Two I mean, he's just years. really. He should go wrestle on a college team next year. Like. <laughs> No red shirt, like he would likely be challenging for an NCAA title, um, like kind of right away. We did a a draft at the beginning of last college season, and David Bray drafted Jax Forrest to his team because he knew he was going to go score a bunch of points in college opens. At the open tournaments, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like there probably is a chance he reclassifies. He is old for his grade, so yeah. I just don't see like I just don't see how he could remain. Um, and he, you know, and like honestly, when I think about the fact that he lost to a Pennsylvania kid a month ago, it's like he probably had just to be bored, right? He was bored, and he's like, "Ah, this kid's not as good as me," and he kind of like probably took it too lightly, and then it was like, "Oh crap!" And you know what I'm saying? And a few things happened and went the wrong way, and then he lost, and then obviously like a couple weeks later, he 15 owes him. So the, yeah. the there was obviously a skill discrepancy there. Like he's way better, and so 
you know, I guess maybe he was sick or something, but this kid's, he's the real deal. He's really, really good. Um, you know, he should be competing at the senior level and college level because that's the level he's at. I wonder if it's how hard it is to reclassify and get into like some of the best schools, you know, like if, mm. if losing those credits, losing those classes makes it harder right. to get into some schools. Like Michigan. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but the mercenaries will find a way to get him in. <laughs> if Jax Forrest said, "I'm coming to Michigan next year," mountains would be moved <laughs> to make that happen. Yeah, it, it seems like any school would be like, "We'll figure it out." Yeah, we'll we'll make it happen. You know, outside of your with, maybe your Ivy leagues that. Ha. Huh. Yeah, with NIL, they would hire someone. Your job. <laughs> Is to get Jack Sports into school ASAP. <laughs> That's all your job is for the next three Hey, you months. know what I heard this morning? Um, Zach yeah. Eady, do you know who this has been? The Purdue basketball player? Big tall no. guy. Big tall guy. He's seven feet tall. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, the yeah. best player on their team. Yeah. Purdue's in the final tonight. He's been their ble- best player Whoa. for two years. He can't make money on NIL because he's from Canada. No way. So, ha. Uh, Trudeau, that's what he gets <laughs> No, he's getting screwed. <laughs> Why is that even a rule? Man. It has something to do is with like his green rule card. Or Canada rule, because Canada's moderately socialist. Uh, I would assume that's an NCAA I think it's rule. It was a U- well, the, the only reason that it's an NCAA rule is because the U.S. I don't know, man. I thought the NCAA changed the rules, too. Tyler, look that up. Go- Google that. I only heard it uh, yeah, this morning on a podcast. Wild. I didn't get too into it. But right. they also said so there might to, be a backdoor way Forrest. to make money. Back to Jax uh, Forrest. Jax Forrest, he's so good. He's really impressive. I'm excited to watch him compete in two weeks. Anthony Knox, I thought he acquitted himself well. It was it was disappointing he chose not to wrestle after losing to Brandon Courtney in that controversial match. Um, he beat up on a guy who I think is good, but will probably never see the light of day at Penn State, Kel Nazdio. I think he's really tough. Knox kind of whooped him on the front side. And then we would have got to see Knox versus Desmond on the backside, but Knox did not wrestle. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of Bo Bassett beating Ashnault and making the finals? Yeah, um, that it was really impressive. Um, you know, his match, honestly, the, the fun match to watch was him and Valencia. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says 7-4. It was 6-4, and uh, Valencia almost got a takedown of the buzzer, and they threw the brick, right, because he would have won 6-6. Um, and that's what made it 7-4. It was good. I want to say he was down early, maybe like a 4-2, and came back and got a couple takedowns. Um, yeah, I mean, he's another one. Like, I, he can compete. He beat up on um, David Evans, who's a Penn State wrestler, first round. He's not a starter, but he's had some, like, pretty solid results. Yeah, he's wrestled um, a couple duels for him, too, I think. Yeah, and then, you know, Valencia beat up on Jordan Williams, who was, uh, like, a, what, a 12 seed at Nationals or mm-hmm. something to that effect. So, I mean, these kids can absolutely compete with the college-level guys. They're they're really, really good, really skilled, can wrestle in a lot of positions. Uh, you know, even Pearson Manville, he got a win over um, uh, Ian, Parker. Ian Parker, yes, mm-hmm. early on. And I think Parker was winning that when he came back. And then the Ashnall Manville match was weird because Man- Ashnall was winning kind of, um, uh, like a controlled match and guys head split. Yeah, like on the really top. bad with, on top. And so then the the one ref started telling them, "Well, no, you need to have it like all the way taped up by the time your time's up, or you're disqualified." So then I, you know, see like he just quick wrapped it, and then the wrap actually falls off in like seven seconds. But it was like kind of like <laughs> panic mode, and you know, they let him finish the match. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was a crazy one. So yeah, a lot, a lot of craziness in this bracket. But Matt Kolodzik, um he won every match ten to zero, I think. Yeah, yeah he, he put um, that Bassett train up. Two eleven zero wins. Yeah, two eleven. Okay, so <laughs> forty two to zero. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was really good. I don't have any idea who Ruben Calderon is. I've never heard of him, but he tech fall Dean Heil. Um, has anyone else ever heard of him? My little. No, I don't know who that is. No. Sorry. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, well, um, Henry Porter also yeah, took so. out Jaden Ironman. Yeah, Henry Porter is the guy. Okay. He's tough. He's one of Daniel Cormier's guys uh, from California. I think he's at the Indiana or Purdue or something. Indiana. Indiana yeah. Mm-hmm. Indiana. Yeah. I'd so. known he was a California guy. <laughs> I would have expected. Yeah, uh, but then Ironman got 10 would by Anthony Valencia on the backside. 
Oh, also. really? Anthony, Anthony Valencia. Well, Aiden Valencia? Yeah, him too. Him too. Yes. <laughs> Aiden, but... It's kind of like... You know what I did not put together? Which, you know, sometimes I feel so stupid for not putting things together. Um, So on Saturday was the women's in Greco and in... And uh, Valencia's dad is there, and he's wearing an Iowa shirt. I'm like, I swear to God, uh, Aiden Valencia is going to Stanford. I, I'm almost certain of that, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's weird that he's wearing an Iowa shirt. Maybe he really likes Iowa. I don't know. Maybe Aiden's got some NL. I don't know, right? Weird. Why is he wearing an Iowa shirt? And then I'm sitting down and watching this match, and he's kind of like sitting over there. <laughs> and I look at the last name, and it's Valencia. I'm like, oh, I'm so stupid. His yeah. daughter wrestles Russell's Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. yeah so dumb. Right at 50? Yeah. 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 She wanted it. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> so he's really good. He can make an imp- Aiden Valencia can definitely make an impact on the college scene next year. With these high schoolers beating these guys, it's kind of like, uh, you know, how much are these guys actually training, you know, at this point? Yeah. But then you say, like, NATO stopped coaching to focus on making, yeah. the, on making the Olympic trials and so he could train full time. So. Some of them, I but think, are about- just tossing their hat in the ring, kind of like hanging yeah. around. Um, but you still feel like, okay, well, they should be able to, you know, just like outstrength these 16 year olds. Yeah. But then you talk about, hold on, you talk about someone like um, David Evans, right? So he got, he got tech fold on the front side by Bassett and he got tech fold on the back side by Aiden Valencia. He did beat Pearson Manville 12 11, right? So he had that, he wrestled three high schoolers. But he's a guy. He lost to Kasek in overtime. He lost to Kasek four to two. Um, you know, he beat Jordan Hamden, who's an NCAA qualifier. He beat CJ Composto, who's been an All American. Like he's got some really good results at the college level. Um, he's a really tough dude, and they both just smoked him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Um, and it seems like this is going to be the new norm moving forward, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's not just one or two guys that are doing yes. this. There's a, a whole, like, now the top 10, 15 um, on every big board are going to have this potential. Yeah, it's, it's, it is weird, though, because, like, I, you say top 10, 15. Um, it is does feel weird because, like, you know, an Aiden Sinclair or a, a Cole Mirasola, you know, they're, they got to be top 20, I would assume. I don't know where they are on the big yeah. board. But, you know, they, they weren't able to get it done at the senior level. It does... Um, and I don't know, you know, I was thinking about this because it I don't want to, it's not like me making excuses, but it's like the the smaller guys, it, oh, it's huge like advantage. NATO's a full grown Well, it's, it's it feels like a maturity advantage, but then it's like, well, NATO's a full grown adult. Like he's he's a man, he's twenty eight or whatever, you know, like so that doesn't really make sense. I don't know, but when you see like the bigger guys, they look a little more mature, but then you know, when you think about it from a logical standpoint, it doesn't really make sense. But it does seem for whatever reason that you know, the smaller guys are having a little more success. uh, There's more of them having success than at the upper weights. I think it, it's gotta be some sort of like maturity thing though, right? You would feel like it, but you know, you think about like, what doesn't make sense like NATO or, you know, some of these other guys we we brought up or they're, they're plenty full grown adults. Well, I'm talking about the, the high schooler, the high school kids. Like it it feels like, Mm. which that also doesn't make sense because you would think smaller guys are less mature actually. Less mature. Yeah. But I feel well, like those like bigger guys have grown man strength. I mean, you could yeah. even, but like Connor Mirasola did beat Max Dean, right? So you could do right. that. And like yeah, yeah. a couple years ago, Gable Stevenson was like right there yeah. with Adam Kuhn. Uh, yeah. And I yeah. forget who else he beat. But yeah. I mean, you do have those examples yeah. of the, the bigger guys. And, and Bassett and Forrest and uh, Marcus Blaze, they, they, do, they do look kind of baby faced. Like they, they don't look like uh, full grown men yet. I feel like it's more common with the the ends, but less common with the middleweights. I don't know. Hmm, interesting. I don't know. Yeah, there was a few good ones that. Uh, I mean, so we had we had a high school kid competing at seventy four. He won a couple matches and he lost to Vincenzo in the quarters. Um, Joe Seely was right there I with want... Yaya or two, right? Who who's that? Jo- Joe Seely. Joe Seely, and I want to say Grigger had a pretty good tournament if i remember uh, correctly so Seely, let's see Seely lost to yaya in the quarters and then one and one. Oh, so elroy perkin wisconsin whitewater stand up <laughs> elroy perkin took out joe Seely 
and he took out Gregory. He said, no high school kids are going to go with me today. 10-0, 10 Hey, was the – what's his name? Um, Josh or John Gunderson? Uh, John have... Gunderson? He had a day, boy. I know. Is, oh was he God. one of your guys? I know he's Wisconsin. No, oh, he wrestled at our AWA Madison facility with Tristan Moran for the last, you know, what, two year and a half, two years of his high school career after we opened up. Um, and he was there, you know, so we we took over that facility at Madison and he was already going there and then he continued to go there. Uh, Matt told Parker, Parker Kett guy, I said, you better watch out, bro. I watched John Gunnarsson today, smash some dudes. He might it's come take nice. your starting spot. <laughs> yeah. Bro, he beat Nelson Brands 10-0 twice. He beat Foka 10-0 and he tech fall Taylor Lujan, like, what yeah i know holy crap what a day and he's in his sec just he's finishing his second year at you and i i think or third uh oh no he's, you're right but so you know what he did so he placed at the senior us open last year no he's finishing his third but he has three years of eligibility because he wrestled his first year they needed someone 97 then he redshirted, and he placed at the U.S. Open, so the Olympic redshirted him this year. Uh-huh. And he was kind of funny. Yeah, so he's got three results because they wanted him to get – they wanted to bump him up to heavyweight for a while because he's kind of big, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think he just couldn't get big enough for heavyweight, and so now he's leaning back out. So, you know, I don't know what the plan is there with um, Volker and Parker. And you know who else just wrestled, again, up a lot of weight? Uh, Lance Runyon, who was uh, – pretty good guy from yeah. Iowa tank. He was a one seven four though. And he wrestled at two thirteen, and he didn't look, he wasn't shredded or anything, but he didn't look out of place. Right. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We haven't talked train, about, baby. we haven't talked about Christian Carroll yet at 97. Oh, yeah. He looked, Man, he looked really, really good. good. Yeah. He looked, I, I actually mentioned when I walked in the gym, I was talking to Christian and he just looked a lot healthier than he like. I think last year maybe he was trying to bulk up too much or something, and he had a lot of weight on him that maybe wasn't good weight. And you could just tell he he just looked a lot healthier, a lot better. Uh, and then he obviously wrestled really well too. So we back in on Carroll because I feel like uh, well super high coming out of high school, obviously, and then expectations got tampered. Um, he didn't have a great year or two, but now. What weight do you think he's going to go in college? Is he that's, gonna... that's my worry yeah. is, uh, you know, he looks like one of those guys, you know, another guy who'd be kind of in this vein would be a, a Braxton Amos, who's like really big for 197. 197 is really hard, but then like you're still like kind of small at heavyweight um, and just maybe don't have stylistically because obviously we have had guys who are, say, 230 and won NCAA titles. But there's some guys that stylistically the the bump doesn't work or make sense for them. So he looked really good, but he does look big. Like he did not look small next to Jacob Warner, and Warner was always a big 197. Um, and obviously that was a solid 213. Should there be a weight class like high school? I don't think no. so. I don't think so either. <laughs> no. I think the rumor was even before uh last chance is that he was dropping down to go 197 next year uh christian carroll i wouldn't be opposed to changing 197 to like 205 that i i i like that idea i don't hate that idea at all 20, yeah, 20, bump 20, it up pound two pounds. 20 pounds from 184 well you can bump you oh. can even bump 184 up a few pounds and then bump 197 up a little more I, yeah i don't hate that at all i think that i think that would actually be a good fit and given what our international weights are it makes a lot of sense right because yeah. we have a college weight of 197 and heavyweight and in freestyle we have 189 202 213 and heavyweight right so it's mm-hmm. kind of like not not set up properly i kind of think the international there's a little too much in that the upper 92 is, 97 yeah. 125 it gets a little watered down i feel up get, there yes. a little bit so, well yeah so in college you have two weights and in freestyle you have four right yeah so don't disagree let's make it let's split the let's difference make it three and four. <laughs> Well, let's move the freestyle weight classes down, right? So let's yeah. go, let's go heavyweight two ten, you know one ninety five, and then we'll we'll keep sliding, we'll keep sliding, right, to make more towards the middle because that's where we need them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in, in freestyle, then we can go, you know, or sorry, in college we could do the same thing. We bump one eighty four up a little bit, we bump one eighty seven up a little bit, and now we have a very like similar situation in both styles. Yeah, I don't hate it. All right. No, we, we're solving the world's problems right here on that part. <laughs> so we'll get more into kind of uh, Olympic trials previews uh, next week and whatnot. But 
Let's talk specifically about the guys who qualify here. Let's start with Jax okay. Forrest. How much of an impact is he actually going to play at uh, Olympic well, Trials? There's two, guys, there's two guys we didn't talk about. Um, Tenzo? Dave McFadden looked really good. Yeah. Um, Tech Ball, unfortunately for Aiden, Tech Ball his way through the tournament. Um, Tech Ball, Morgan McIntosh in the finals. It was Laced competitive for a while and he got a leg. Laced him up. Um, he looked really good. And then heavyweight, I didn't know this dude wrestled anymore. Um, Jerron Smith, he was a Maryland guy, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. Mm-hmm. Terpy. I feel like it's been a while. Uh, Am I wrong? Couple years, not that long. Twenty twenty two. I remember him being. On, oh, or maybe am last I year. The wrong he wrestled at least in twenty twenty three. I think. Yeah. Because okay. I remember ranking him. Um. There you go. Yeah. He, he oh yeah, because Ron Smith and Jackson Smith on the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and David McFadden, yeah. he broke his ankle or foot at mm-hmm. Senior Nationals. I think he's only been April on the mat December, for like yeah. six weeks or something. Mm-hmm. So six, weeks. Ta- six his... weeks is a good clip. <laughs> yeah, his takedown was awesome. His counter score mm-hmm. was slick. Didn't look like a man who had just broken his ankle. Yeah, there was one sequence though that I I was like in disbelief. They 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 ended up just white paddling it and saying nothing happened. They were in a far ankle scramble, and Dave McFadden was grabbing the man's shoelace. Like, it was, like, pulled up, like, six inches off his shoe, right? Because he was pulling about it so hard. And then when, when he got caught, the ref blew whistle and pointed at it. And so I thought, surely he'll get a caution. He's like, my finger stuck. <laughs> but it was like, he was, like, clearly, like, you know, hooking his finger. <laughs> it was so funny. My finger got stuck. And then they talked about it, and they gave no points. It was wild. Hey, you got to play the game sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, got to play the game, I guess. That's uh, so funny. All right, let's start at 57. All Jax right. Forrest, is he going to be a player at Olympic Trials? Oh, uh, man. Like, uh, I could say I could see him beating like uh, Liam Cronin, DeShazer. Uh, man, I, I just have a hard time seeing, like, Gilman Fix, Spencer Vito, maybe, you know, like those guys. What about Zane? Just, what about Zane Richards? Yeah, him, him as well. I would, I would think no. I'm giving him a shot big, though. Okay. I mean, after what he just did to NATO, and then it's like, hey, yeah. I could see NATO and Zane having a really close match. I wouldn't yeah, predict. I wouldn't predict Jax to win, but Jax seems like a really not ruling like, it out. Weird wrestler to wrestle for like the first time. Oh yeah, uh, especially in freestyle. So I, yes. I'm, I would not be shocked to see him do anything really i mean there are some okay anything i don't want to shane sparks it um there's definitely some things i would be shocked to see him do. there's definitely some things i would be shocked to see him do but i i there's a lot i think he can do a lot yeah i'm curious what where they see them uh i know also he's trained with dayton fix a lot um in the past so that would be kind of funny if they met like first round um Obviously, you, mm. you roll with Dayton Fix, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that'd know. be like a three. Yeah, I was feeling in that match. That's like where it's like, like Dayton just feels like he's gonna have too much power. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he's gonna be able to control and push around, and he's probably not gonna need to take the risks that would put him in situations that Jax Force could win type thing. What if Jax catches one of these guys right off the scale after a bad weight cut? Mm. And that's possible. So Jax kind of looks a little big, also though. He's uh, tall, but he's pretty, know, like, pretty lanky. Pretty skinny, but yeah, he he doesn't he doesn't look small for that weight class. No, so Vito will be sitting to the semifinals at that weight, but nobody's sitting to the uh, nobody's sitting to the finals. So yeah. All right, Klodzik. I just think we've had too many previous results. Um, yeah. We kind of know where he's some good guys, up. but he's probably not going to beat the, the top run guys. You know, I was looking at this one, really one through six. If any, if any of one through six, and I guess you got to include eight being Mendez because he just beat Bartlett and Bartlett's five. If any of them made the team, I don't know that I would be all that surprised. So it's Nick Lee, Yanni, Alirez, James Green, Bo Bartlett, Joey McKenna. I skipped Caleb Barkin, which maybe I, I shouldn't have because he's really good. Oh, also, yeah, he beat Mendez. And I, and he beat Mendez and Jesse Mendez. But so if I include Bartlett, I feel like I have to include Mendez given what we just mm-hmm. saw. Um, so maybe maybe I stop. But then 
Yeah. And then, then I feel weird about not including Montana. So then, yeah, I don't know. We'll just throw the top eight. Anyone in the top eight wins, I'm not surprised. Don't forget, I don't know if we've talked about on this show, Zane is going down to 65. And Zane Rutherford. He'll be we'll sitting, be in, sitting the in the semis. Side. And you know what? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, uh, we'll talk more about it later, but he might be my pick. Yeah. Well, and like you said, if any of these top eight guys can win and somebody with an advantage to the semis, you feel like that's like maybe the safest, safest pick. Right. Yeah. True. Is it, is it kind of crazy that U17 champs get to qualify for the Olympic trials or am I? Oh, crazy. You, oh, crazy. You think it's crazy too? Uh, it's insane. I don't hate it. I mean, just look what just happened. I mean, it's fun to see. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you're, a, you have to be a world champion. Yeah. Like, it's not even make the team. So you're yeah, old I enough. What just happened, but he actually beat, like, he had to beat senior level guys to get there. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. like, a U17 world he, champ doesn't have to. He was, but he wasn't even a world champ. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Right. I'm saying, so somebody went out there and did better than he did at Worlds. Last, last year, though. Last year. True. Last year. So, you know, the whole year ago, with the kids that young, like, they get so yeah. much better. Let them, yeah. let, them go, get, let them go there and get spanked. Like, why not? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's fun sure. for sure. But, yeah, I don't know. You're, you know what? You're right, J.D. I don't hate it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 63, Vincenzo, I think we, we've seen where he stacks up. I think, you know, he could be as good as – Number three, but I have a hard time seeing him beating uh, Noel for Burroughs. The top um, tier here is so good. And there, yeah, there's some other, you know, I could see Keegan beating him. I could see Siraki beating him. I could see Mitchell beating him. So, um, yeah. So I don't think he's super threat. And then I, I feel similarly about um, McFadden. Yep. I do too. You know, just Brooks and Taylor are different. He could definitely. Um, win some of the lower seeded matchups though. Yes. You know, him versus Parker would be fun. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh ninety seven, I mean I feel like that's one where maybe up to Nate Jackson, I would say that he's kind of Christian Carroll's kind of you know a threat for or we could see him getting some wins against those guys. But you know, when you go Nate Jackson and above, I, I have a hard time seeing it and not saying it's impossible, just saying it's Maybe doubtful. Yeah, some of those bottom couple seeds at 97. You got Slim Tone, Anthony Cassiope, Schultz, Jaello, Nate Jackson. So, you know, maybe Christian Carroll could beat a, you know, a Cassiope, a Niello, a Schultz. Yes. Slim Tone. Slim Tone. 125 kilos, Jerron Smith. Kind of similar. He could beat, uh, you know, like a Trent Hilger, um, a Demetrius Thomas, a Gary Traub, but – when you start getting up into the uh, the Gwiz, Zilmer, Mason Paris tier, it's going to yes. be tough. So. I agree. All right, hey, guys, 10 o'clock. That was actually – I don't know how we ended that perfectly at 10 o'clock with those. It's perfect. Hey, can you uh, – Tyler, on, on my way out, can you brag about your mission mercenaries? They got another athlete. I know we're talking NAL on Thursday, oh, but maybe you can brag about how they got another athlete signed up for next year. And then also Oklahoma State going hard in the portal. They got both Caleb Fish and Dean Hamidi committed. Two sixty fives. Who's moving? All of them. Oh, <laughs> I bet Hamidi. Uh, my Hamidi would be my guess. Hamidi bumping up. Okay, we'll talk more about that on Thursday. We're not done. Ben's done. But uh, I'm done. See you guys. Have a great day. See you, Ben. Bye, right, Ben. Me, Kozak, and Tyler are gonna hang out for a little bit longer. What should we get into? Well, does Tyler want to address the uh, the Michigan? Oh mercenaries? my gosh! Well, Michigan, first of all, only really goes for grad transfers. If you'll allow me to defend them real quick, because that's just it's hard to get undergrad transfers into Michigan. Um, so, like a lot of the time, you're dealing with guys who've already finished their undergrad at their school that they come from, and they're just looking to further their education, baby. So, <laughs> Jacob Cardenas was a perfect fit. I hate the whole. Uh, we have to defend picking up transfers. It's the game yeah. now. Like, yeah. Who cares if they're a grad transfer or not? Like, yeah. It's not immoral <laughs> to to pick up transfers. It's it's just the game now. I think it, if any team people, I think if you're gonna complain about how far and away Penn State is, 
and then also complain that people are getting transfers, I think like you, you have to realize that the only way anyone's going to catch up to Penn State is by playing that game right now, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Yeah, and if you look at any other big sport, like it's happening way more yeah. in college football. And even in like women's basketball, I was watching this weekend, there's a girl who's already played on two teams and she's in the transfer portal now to play on a third team. It's like that's just – that's just – the show is baby. Athletics. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's the world we're living in. Did you find that Zach Keady situation for me, Tyler? Yeah, it basically has to do with immigration laws preventing him from being yeah. able to sign name, image, and likeness deals. I don't know if that has to do with, like, visa stuff or what, but... I heard it had something dark. to do with, like, his, like, green card situation. Yeah. It was insane. Matt Ramos posted a funny picture of him and Zach Eady. Really? He's, he's just way taller. Obviously, he goes up to, like, his belly button. <laughs> <laughs> Like halfway up his torso, because <laughs> he's probably he he is I think seven foot zero and probably like two hundred and. Did he post it on Instagram? Yeah, but I think it was a story. Oh, okay. So it might be gone. Eh, was it yesterday? It might have been yesterday though. It's not there anymore. Not there anymore. It must have been two days ago. Yeah. R.I.P. Caitlin Clark. She couldn't win a title. <laughs> Sorry, Hawkeye fans. She tried her hardest in the first quarter. Yeah, and she didn't have much left. For the last stream. That, the, yeah, that, I don't know. That was a fun game. I don't want to talk about it too much. Never mind. I don't want to talk about it too much. Wow, you don't want to talk about is Caitlin Clark a bust? If she, since she <laughs> never won a, a team title? Well, she's not the GOAT? <laughs> nah, she's the GOAT. Uh, what else? So, should we talk Euro qualifier? Yeah, do we want to talk about Chimizo? Chimizo? Corruption. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> homeboy, homeboy got robbed. Yeah, man. um, Josh, uh, if you're in the uh, the doc, we uh, I put uh, the link in there to the match so we can watch. So if you didn't see Chimizo's wrestling, uh, Bayramov, who actually Keegan wrestled at Keegan pinned him. Was that U twenty three? Was that juniors? Yeah, juniors. Yes, U <laughs> twenties. I, I couldn't remember which one it was at. He he pinned him at U twenties. Um, should also be noted. He's Azerbaijani. This was in Azerbaijan. Coincidence? I don't know. But he gets up 6-0 to zero on Chimizo on a 4-2. And, and I actually thought... I thought Chimizo turned down. I didn't think he landed in danger. Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't review that. Chimizo didn't challenge. So, And then Chimizo kind of starts chipping away, chipping away until the end. And then with 30 seconds to go, I think Bayramov is up 8-6. to six. Yeah. Chimizo. Before that, there were a couple of slip calls that. So so one of them, no, it wasn't a slip. Chimizo stepped on his foot, Oh. which is illegal. Yeah. So with 30 seconds to go, he takes him down, but he, he did the foot stomp and tackle, which is not allowed mm. in freestyle. You can't step on feet. Um, Snyder has been called for that. A couple times. So I think that's what they called. Anyway, I, I assumed because he definitely stepped on the foot and took him over, which that is kind of like actually one of his favorite takedowns <laughs> when he actually doesn't counter when he has to be on the attack. But um, so they so they wipe that off. And then so Chimizo sprinting at him and they stop it as he's taking him down because they went caution and won. Yeah. But he clearly like took him down but i think they did technically blow the whistle stand back up and the same thing happens caution one another yeah caution and one down happens as the takedown is happening chemis was like you gotta let me work here like you can't caution and one him mm -hmm. you know right now and then so there's like nine seconds left and he goes and Gets the takedown. Gets behind the knees down for a split times on the second. Clock. Yeah. It's um, it's like rear standing position. Chimizo's coming behind, and Bayramov's. It looked like knee was down to me. Mm -hmm. The announcers are like, "That's a takedown. He yeah, did it. Like, oh, he did it. He did it." There's the clear, there's clearly time on the clock. There's one second left, and they review it and they wave it off. Not even the call on the mat was. Mm -hmm. Take down two points. The, weird, the weirdest part was the commentators <laughs> were so certain that Chimizo was going back to the Olympics. Yeah. Yes. The whole time they were reviewing, like, yeah, he's got it. He's got it. And then they're just like, no takedown. 
Yeah. So pretty insane. Chimizo, <laughs> he's like at the official, like the heck man, really? Like mm-hmm. he's like kind of protesting. Bayramov comes up to him and he, he's all happy. And he's like trying to like hug him. And Chimizo's like, get off me, yeah. dude. Yeah. He didn't want to leave the mat. No. He's like, I know what happened here. Yeah. He made and an Instagram post. He did. He said, my sport is beautiful but corrupt or something like that. Yeah. Which kind of sad. Um, and it's not going to be easy to qualify because you look at the other 74 kilo qualifier, Cotty takes out Big Sulk. Yep. Big Sulk is no easy matchup. Has he he has he beaten Chimizo? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, always at Euros he beats yeah. Chimizo. Yep. Um yeah, Cotty's so Cotty's back in the Olympics. Yep. So I would love to see I mean if Dake makes it, it'd be great to see a rematch between between those two at the uh at the Olympics this year. Right. Fun. The the match we were denied of. Mm-hmm. Um at Worlds. Yeah. So and then Russia qualified. They qualified eighty six and ninety seven. Even without Sajulayev there. Uh Looking at for USA, uh, 65, the mm-hmm. Albanian, the Russian transfer, Dudeyev is probably the best guy that mm-hmm. didn't make it out of Euros. Yeah, he's tough. Uh, he didn't make it. And then uh, Kijan Clark didn't make it either, which I thought he had a pretty good draw. draw. Um, but yeah, he didn't, he didn't make it. But really, 65s at Euros isn't too bad. It's going to be interesting uh, at Asians. Coming up in two weeks, that'll kind of really tell us. Um, but the good thing this year too is there's three qualifiers at the last, yeah, the last one rather than just two, mm-hmm. um, which is how they used to do it. I feel really good about 57. I feel like 57 we should be able to get it done. Whoever USA sends, but yeah, 65 is probably more up in the air. Who who does 65 like? Well, we'd have to beat. So India isn't qualified yet. Japan isn't either. Um, but they can both qualify at Asians. They could both qualify, yeah. And then Dudayev and uh, Arshanyan, who beat Kijan Clark from Ukraine, he's good. Uh, I still feel pretty good about qualifying 65. Yeah. It, you feel better because you can take third to qualify now. You don't have to just make the finals. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, as more guys qualify, true, like, it, I'm not saying it's a done deal. I mean, we didn't get it done at Pan Ams, obviously. And yeah. last chance qualifier is going to be just as tough, if not more tough. But then you kind of look at, you know, some of the guys that didn't qualify, like the next tier of guys that didn't qualify here at Euros. It's like, uh, I like our odds here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially if, you know. They're not insurmountable. Yeah. No, no it, like I think it would be an, it would take like an upset to lose. Yeah, to yeah. As qualify. long as like as long um, as we could go there and not India, yeah, qualify. which I, and that's also kind of what I'm banking on. Yeah, too is both of those, both of those countries qualifying at Asians. Yeah, who's Japan's rep going to be? Uh, the guy who beat um, Odaguru's name is like Kiyoku. Yeah, I mean he hasn't really done anything internationally, so. And it won't be Bajrang. Um yeah. I forget the the Indian's name, but um, Bajrang didn't even make it to the match to yeah. wrestle that dude. I think it's the guy who beat um, Yanni a couple years ago. I don't know if you remember that. I thought Bajrang was like not wrestling. He was like still uh, he was protesting. protesting. Yeah. But I think he did come back and try mm-hmm. and make a run. Oh, he did? Yeah. That was unsuccessful. Uh, let's see. So we got to last chance. That was Euro qualifier talk. Um, man, this Penn State draft. Oh yeah, I was gone for this. What did you guys do? So we drafted um all time Penn State wrestling team. Uh-huh. CP won both the the Twitter and the the Instagram. JD went a, an unconventional route. I'm so sick of. Christian winning things. <laughs> I'm so serious. Like let's CP got to go first, and he got the real advantage oh, because of he got to go first. Well, we we random drew. I flipped the coin. No, of course, he got to go first. He probably demanded it and forced you guys to let him go first. 
classic CP. When I selected Andy Matter last, I knew I wasn't going to win. Yeah. Nobody knows. Nobody knows who he is. Except uh, the I real historians who, he is. who don't waste their time on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. They're, uh, they know. Yeah, if you want to win the draft, you should have to draft the big names. Exactly. I saw... Because yeah, all the comments were like, where's RBY? Where's mm-hmm. RBY? Nick Lee? <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I don't... Uh, I wouldn't want to win this pool. Because... <laughs> Well, okay, so I screenshotted it, and he- here's how smart our followers are. The top comment after, so it's literally in the screenshot that I took. The top comment is, where's Spencer Lee? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. The dude didn't wrestle for Penn State, so that's uh, that's the kind of company Christian is keeping. So what is the this. like point? It's just supposed to be like... Who would score the most points at NCAA's? It's or just like, hypothetical. It's just, it's just like, whose team do you want mo- most? Okay. Yeah. And well, he, he had the advantage because we there's a clear like top seven. And so Christian going first, we did snake draft. He got to choose three mm-hmm. in those top seven with Ed Ruth. So after Ed Ruth, my next pick was Kerry McCoy. Christian always makes sure he has an unfair advantage. Dude. Which... Obviously, that's there's like a drop off in name recognition right. when you go from Ed Ruth to Kerry McCoy, and then it's you go from the the four and the three timers to the two timer champs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just to, to I don't I don't have to, but just to rehash here, Andy Matter, two time NCAA champ, only two career losses, didn't get to wrestle as a freshman because those were the NCAA rules back then. And he didn't get to wrestle back in his sophomore year because those were the rules back then. It was like repechage. So Nick Lee, like he wouldn't have he wrestled back, you know, to what was it, fourth, third? Yeah. Fourth his fresh freshman year. Someone said That's no gone. Nick Suriano was wild. <laughs> <laughs> he did help him win the title that year. Okay. Um I don't know. Should we get to some questions? What else is chat yeah. saying? We can. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Before, before we get to questions, uh, David, uh, Bray, and I went to uh, Space uh, House yesterday. Which, Which one? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, the one that Ollie lives in. Um, and we were helping him cut down some some dead trees. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was right right after Jax won. And we we're talking about Jax, Bo Bassett. Where do you think those guys go to college? And with Bo Bassett, and I guess even Jax too, what are the chances that they go somewhere other than like Penn State, Iowa, or Penn State. Iowa? And I know Jax really like has a relationship with Oklahoma State too. So I don't know if we want to talk about that at all. I don't know if we can talk about what you're planning on doing too. Over what am I planning the, on over doing? the summer? Oh yeah, yeah, we can talk about so, that. Yeah, and just uh, yeah, what do we think? Where where do we think they're going? I mean, I have no idea. I don't. Mm-hmm. I have no relationship with them or their their families really. Um, I do know. So the only connections really for Bo would be okay. They're in Pennsylvania and they have like Penn State decals like in their wrestling room. So there's some there's mm-hmm. a fan fan aspect there where I you know I'm sure they you know would love to wrestle for Penn State just in the sheer fact that they're fans. Yeah of the guys and you know how they wrestle there's also the um young guns in iowa connection yeah um jody strip matter has sent a lot of guys to iowa although not as many um in the past the past couple of years uh, that those are like the only two connections mm-hmm. really that i know of um what do you think tyler so. um I don't, I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know why, like, so I, I actually, if you, I'll talk about what, what you brought up. Um, I don't know if anyone who listens to this podcast saw what I did last summer with Anthony Knox, where I spent like the day with him before he uh, got all his recruiting calls, but I'm going to be doing that with uh, some of the Bishop McCourt guys this year. And ahead of that, I went to the Pennsylvania state championships um, to just kind of like be with those guys a little bit. And in talking to them, they, they seem very open to everything. I mean, Bo Bassett went out of his way to make that Instagram post a while ago. Yeah. Say, like his oh, yeah, every team. Like I forgot about that. schools or something. Um, 
So I don't think that they're dead set on anything. I remember I was talking to Jax's dad and he was like, yeah, a lot of people were thinking like, oh, he's just a done deal to Oklahoma State because he trained with Dayton or, oh, he's a done deal to Penn State because of that. Like, mm -hmm. And his dad made it clear to me that he... Yeah, you're open, and, Yeah, but... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, Every, Everybody's open, but... I mean, a lot of times they end up going kind of where we think they're going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where do you uh, think to one of these? I mean, yeah. Know, probably Penn State or Iowa. <laughs> yeah. Bo to me just feels like Iowa, like just off of vibes. I don't have any like no no. It's like traditional Hawkeye yeah. Yeah. style. Feels like Iowa, and he then loves that stuff. Jax feels like Penn State. This is like the way he wrestles. Uh, he just feels they, like a Penn oh, State. Oh, also guy. kind of wrestles. I don't know. He reminds me a little bit of like David Taylor. Really. I don't know, just Photos? in terms of pace and just like yeah, a body awareness. I mean, yeah, I, no, I see it. And you look at he, here's a question for you guys: Is the Iowa style, quote unquote, dead at Iowa? <laughs> yeah. I mean, look look at their team this year. Like, I'm not trying to bash them. Like, they were really good. But who fit the Iowa style? Yeah, nobody yeah. fits the Iowa style, quote unquote, mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah, Ayala, not really. Real Woods, no. And even like Spencer Lee didn't fit the Iowa style mold. Mm -hmm. In fact, he was quite the opposite. Yeah, yeah, he was way more techie was, in, in the first or yeah, second. It was documented period, yeah. mm -hmm. that he didn't score as many points later in the match. Right, and what? physically obvious like clearly get tired like there's nobody who is like okay they're gonna mm -hmm. break you with their pace yeah they don't have that mitchell messenbrink right on their team right no that's a good point i hadn't thought about that um yeah so does does iowa need does iowa need bo bassett yeah that's the <laughs> that's the question do they need Bo Bassett to bring back the the, the Iowa, Iowa style, style, the brand. Angelo style. Ferrari. He doesn't wrestle the Iowa style. He, he, he wins close matches. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I guess I'm thinking of like the when he wrestled Joe Seeley and who's number one a couple years ago. He just like went after him. But you're right. I mean, Definitely. in all fairness, I feel like the Iowa style, quote unquote, hasn't really been a thing for Since a couple Santa. years. The Santa, yeah, I guess that was a couple years ago. But, and I think uh, that might be one reason why some Iowa fans are getting frustrated. Um, because, well, one, they have insane expectations. Mm -hmm. I mean, Iowa just won a team title in 2021, probably would have won it in 2020. And it feels like forever to the fans. Yeah. It feels like forever. And when your top rival is winning every other year it's not sh like a shared it's mm -hmm. here's who we have to beat and now fifth place which for 99 percent of college teams is a solid finish for 90 percent of teams it's an unreal finish right you know there's a couple teams where maybe you're not satisfied with that finish but you'll take it iowa and now penn state are probably the two teams where you're unhappy with a fifth place finish at the national tournament so so one they have um crazy maybe unrealistic expectations because of what dan gable did and slightly i guess to, to what the brands were doing 10 years ago when they were putting out championship teams um and to now now you see another team doing it what you were doing. Penn State is now doing what Gable was doing and going on crazy runs. But yeah. And, but um, what else I'm trying to say is they're not losing. When they lose, when individuals lose for them, they're not doing it in the Iowa style. They're not maybe coming out, clunk, inching their way back, you know. You see some of their guys. Had, if we had you see two more periods, we would have won. Yeah, right, right. They can't yeah. say that mm -hmm. in a lot of the matches they lose. I think wrestling has just evolved too, to a certain extent where right. it's, it's not as easy to do that. I mean, with the three-point takedown maybe, but I feel like guys are just – like I, I don't know. I feel like that 
a lot of the time, like 20 years ago, the guy who won was the guy with the best gas tank. And I don't always think that's true in the last 10 years. Guys aren't um, going out and crushing butt heavies after a duel <laughs> anymore and coming back and cutting 20 pounds every week and, and falling over in the third period. Yeah. Well, what's also interesting is I said the same thing to David yesterday. I was like, man, I feel like Bo's Iowa, Jax's Penn State – just because of like their styles, and Dave was like, "Well, Penn State doesn't really have a, a style anymore. It's just they win. Win like <laughs> the difference between Bo Bartlett and Mitchell Messenbrink. Well, like, it's, a, it's night and day, right? It's the same with Iowa. I mean, look at up and down their lineup. They have a bunch of different mm-hmm. stylistic guys. Yeah. Um. So I'm not trying to like harp on the Hawkeyes here, really. I mean, I think you know you have to have those different guys on your, yeah. your lineup. Now it's just that. Penn State never had a, a style to begin with. Yeah. Well, could you say even like going away from the Iowa style, it could be like a sign of growth where it's just like, hey, we're not just trying to do, you know, whatever. Get a mold. One, yeah, one thing. We're trying to make our Expand. guys. Yeah. The no, I, I think it's good. I just think fans might not like it. Right. Right. And also, like I said, it's good if you're winning. Yeah. When, when you're not winning, it, it can become frustrating. And like, hey. Let's go back to Iowa. I like Iowa style. I like being able to yell stalling yep. at, uh, at opponents. Like, I can't do that as much anymore. Yeah. So should they, should uh, guys like that, I wish Ben was on um, to ask him. I kind of wanted to ask him. The, uh, the, the, the screw college route to Aaron Pico, should they just do that? I don't think they will. Not right now. Not in an IL era, right? Good point. True. Yeah. That's when you're gonna make your most money. That that's what the other thing I was thinking is this feels like <clears throat> this era of like Bo, Anthony Knox, Jax Forrest, and Marcus Blaze, like the next the, it feels like Spencer, Dayton, Yanni, but with the added aspect of NIL. It's like, could these be the first guys that like really make real, like significant like money, like through NIL, committing out of out of high school. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at a guy like Bo Bassett who already has he already has an IL. An insane yeah. yeah, he already has an IL and he has an insane following social media mm-hmm. following. Dude, I already. was at PA State Championships filming with Bo and like in between him watching his teammates matches, middle schoolers were coming up to him and asking him for pictures, like ask like sometimes other high schoolers ask him for pictures. Yeah, he's already a superstar. How are you going to do that if you're already another high schooler? <laughs> I guess if you're in a different weight, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think they're like younger, maybe like younger high schoolers usually. But yeah, it, it's it's crazy. I mean, he these high schoolers are more known than like in terms of just name recognition than probably 90% of the NCAA field. Bo Bassett. Not not your probably not Jax. He's probably not as well known. But what is it about Bo that is so captivating to people? I, I think he just posts a lot. <laughs> I mean, not just that. You obviously, think that it has he, like, to be something else. Obviously, he like wins good. a lot of matches, and he. I mean, if you watch him wrestle, the dude just doesn't stop. It's it is machine gun mindset. Yeah, his machine gun mindset is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um. I think, but I think he also is very intentional with his, like, he has like a content plan, you know, like I was with him and he was, he was a superstar before this too. I I feel like the social media kind of came, I mean, it helps, but I feel like that came out of him kind of being a superstar. Cause I remember like middle school, like Mm -hmm. people were already like this kid, you know, when, when other middle schoolers had more accolades. I feel like, I don't know. Part of it probably has to do with the club, the club he wrestles for or this or that, you know? Yeah. I mean, the young guns are one of the biggest clubs in the country. That's the club he, he kind of grew up with, I think. And it, there was like that Spencer Lee, next Spencer Lee mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah. It was put on him like thing. really early. Right. Yeah. Because of the, the similarities of mm-hmm. everything. And then you get into the whole, Bishop McCourt thing and the whole they're not allowed to wrestle. Mm-hmm. I think that actually 
boosted his um 5 a.m workout it's everything it's the, the, all yeah the 5 a.m workouts the whole thing it's like and then he wins and then but then he'll lose on a big stage and then come back and yeah. and win you know it's 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 the whole thing it's it's the whole <laughs> the whole package right he always puts himself out there mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's it's really interesting i mean he's gonna be he's gonna be the most popular guy in college wrestling yeah for sure He's the next, the next big one for sure. He's probably the most, like the most high profile high school wrestler ever. Yeah, I, don't I mean, know. yeah, probably in terms of sheer not lore. <laughs> lore. Well, because I'm saying like you get yeah, guys yeah. like Chance Marstall, or yeah, Barry you, Colat, mm -hmm. who, but like now with social media and access, like you used to not be able to watch those guys wrestle unless you literally showed up. To this tournament, so it just used to be word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's this undefeated four timer, yeah, in Pennsylvania, yeah, being the crap out of everybody. He's a freak. It's gonna be a four time NCAA champ, and now we kind of like actually get to see them. Mm -hmm. But I feel like more people, you know, na now nationwide, it can be known other than just hardcore wrestling circles. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, there's this crazy four time Pennsylvania state champ. He's the number one overall. He's the best recruit mm -hmm. of all time now. So we know, like, okay, Bo's, like, obviously an insane recruit. He's not going to be probably number one overall in his class, though. He might be. Mm. Mm, I think he might be number two or not. He, yeah, but I'm saying he, he's not, like, head and shoulders above the other guys in his class. So the lore is bigger with guys who have come before, but because of everything we said, he's going to be the most popular. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's no. what I'm saying, like, most popular, not necessarily, like... He's he's number two behind Jax Forrest. Forrest yeah. yeah. <laughs> in his in this class. Um yeah, I think he's also gonna be one of those guys who people like the same amount of people who love to watch him are gonna hate like to, like there's gonna oh, be yeah. the same amount of people who hate to who hate. Depends on where him. he goes to college. You're already see yeah, you're already seeing it though. Like yeah. when we when we post really? videos of um I feel like Bo's like, not that hated. Yeah. It's equal. It's like it is? Equal it's, split, it's equal? I feel like. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about equal. Well, people are already giving a hard time about like how it, like that he was held back. Oh, uh, the whole and, like, age thing. Uh, like, how every, old is he? We post about him, and then they're like, uh, "Who's that kid that beat him? And who's number one?" Oh, um, yeah, uh, Zapata. Zapata. They're like Zapata's son, like stuff like you know <laughs> what I mean, like stuff like that. Yeah, I mean that that's just gonna come with success. Like, yeah, there's always gonna be that. Like, I remember one of the first people I covered, like my my first event at Flow Wrestling was. Uh, like the 2022 U.S. Open, and I followed Jesse Mendez through the U.S. He wrestled at the senior level. He was still in high school, and every time we posted about him, everyone was like Swiderski's son. <laughs> like, yeah, that's just what. That, well, that's just, that's just social media for you. But I, I feel like everybody who I actually talked to about Bo, like, is like, oh, for sure, and that's it. wrestling, or, or in just general, at least though. curious, like. Mm -hmm. So how good is he gonna be? How it's good rare, is he actually yeah. gonna be? It's rare that you run into a hater in real life. Mm -hmm, you know what yeah. I mean? Like they're all online for sure. Um, yeah. What? So look, being the most popular high school wrestler of all time, <laughs> what expectations come with that? I mean, I think it's, I think it's clear. It's like NCAA champ right away. Yeah, like that's that's what it is. I feel like knowledgeable people aren't gonna have that expectation. No, really. After you know, seeing him, just be international. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he's probably gonna be. What, what weight do you think he's gonna still go? Got in two, at? I got two. He still has two, two years two, in high school. Two, going two years at of high school. So, okay, I, I need two more years of high school. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking like if you throw him into the college field right now, like I, I, I come on, son. Be my expectation, but do you think? All right, maybe a little sidetrack do you think it's better for his popularity if he stays in high school for two more years or if he reclassifies and enters college like do you think that would be after like, one more would year that make more like news would people be more interested or just like let it build i kind of feel like it can't build much more yeah so i feel like it's like do another year of high school maybe go win uh a junior world title or a junior world medal mm -hmm. Win another PA state title. It's not like he can be a four timer 
Right. So, and like, he missed his first year already. So it might be then just parlay that right into like yeah, going into co- reclassifying and going into college. Yeah, that would be incredible. Because yeah, that would make it even that would make it even bigger to where you're like, oh man, you have this kid who's you know otherworldly, so popular, and then, well, then like, the real oh, thing he's going be, to college early. Now. Yeah, right. if he went to college early, and then he proves all the the age elitist mm-hmm. like wrong, and then if he comes out and like says something like that. Yeah. Like this was for all the people that ragged on my age, and then he went and he and then he actually won an NCAA title as like a true freshman. Yeah. After reclassifying, that would add to the insane mm-hmm. lore and popularity. Lore. I love the word lore. Lore. JD's word of the day. Uh, are we going till ten or we can go however long know. we want? Okay. I'm kind of liking the Bo Bassett talk. I know it's, can't, it is can't, fun to talk about him. How much more popular will he get in college? Depends what school he goes to. Yeah. I mean, that's why I think it's it's Iowa or Penn State for him. Which is better in terms of popularity? Iowa or Penn State? Michigan. <laughs> I, Penn State's obviously the best team. I still think you can become a bigger megastar at Iowa. Mm-hmm. I do too. It's not by a lot, but and maybe you could say – Okay, but you're going to become the best wrestler at Penn State. So long term plan that will grow you the most. Right. The brand. But in terms of sheer eyeballs on you, um, talked conversations about you, there's still no place like Iowa. Well, also just uh an environment that feeds into the hype, you know. Like I think Penn State, it part of their success probably is how like low the guys stay like uh, about you know what i mean like they don't pump themselves up too much where carter Sirachi, come on son well, carter yeah there's carter <laughs> for sure but like i mean i feel like i feel like at iowa like the brands brothers will do that with you you know like they'll help pump you up whereas like at penn state it's le- it's less of that carter's kind of an outlier at penn state Carter said he was gonna piss on a dude's grave right before <laughs> ncaa finals <laughs> Yeah, if that's not that's fair. But to my point, I think if an Iowa guy said that, everyone's like, yeah, it would go through. The- it, it's a, it's a bigger deal. That kind of, yeah. I don't want to say flew under the radar. Like we talked about it a lot. A lot of people just brushed it off as like regular Starachi stuff. Yeah, that's what I feel like it. It gets brushed off as Carter Carter stuff. Mm-hmm. But if an Iowa guy does it. It becomes more the brand. Yeah. Someone, uh, on the of Facebook Iowa. Chat, someone in the Facebook chat said he also said he'll punch the Maryland coach, LeMayo. Yes, he did. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, would it be better? I, I feel like Bo can't go heel. It's not in his. No. Like, um, it, it would be fake. Like, Bo's such a nice, nice kid. Like, he's not going to really talk smack. Yeah. He's always very respectful. Yeah. So he's different in like Carter Starachi in that way. Would you become a bigger megastar if you went heel at Iowa versus Spencer Lee, respectful of your think, opponent? I don't think he ever goes heel. Um, so I'm saying he can't, but I'm yeah. saying which makes you a bigger megastar. I think you go heel at Iowa. It definitely makes you a bigger star. It gets you talked about more, but Spencer Lee. It's also hard to be, be a star at Penn State where like, there's You're so many stars. Yeah, it's yeah. so easy to fade into the Yeah. Like think Nick You're just Lee, another three timer. Nick Lee was a two time national champ and like you look at all the other guys that were on a team with him and you talk about a lot a significant amount of them before you start talking about Nick Lee. But like he was insane, you know? So like there's and there's a lot of Penn State wrestlers that are like that. So I mean, even like Zane Rutherford was getting overshadowed by like Bo Nickel, you know? And Zane Rutherford is one of the most dominant and Jason college wrestlers Nolf. of all yeah. time. Yeah, uh, and Jason Nolf. Like, it, it's kind of nuts. The difference, I think, is Bo's style. Look how much we talk about Mitchell Messenbrink. And he was just, I'm saying that I'm doing air quotes, if, if you're just listening, a finalist. He didn't even win. Yeah. But how much more did we talk about Mitchell than maybe some of the I mean, they had two four-timers on their team this year, mm-hmm. who we talked about a lot. But we talked about Mitchell Messenbrink a lot, too, because of how he wrestles. Yeah. Yeah. His, his also style. because of his weight class. 
That's true. And there was Keegan and, Keegan and David. And he's a but we talk player. about it because they're so fun because of how he wrestles. Yeah. And I, I think we will get some of that with, with Bo. Bo. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why it, it's stuff like that that we took. Like we talked maybe like Aaron and Carter aren't held in quite the same vein as your David Taylors, your Bo Nichols. They have another title than them, but they weren't as dominant. They didn't, you know, mm. tech and pin guys at an insane rate like your Taylor, Nickel, Rutherford, I think, Nolfs. I think the reason I think that Iowa is the school that makes a bigger star is we just see it ourselves like with numbers for like the Spencer Lee effect on things or even the DeSanto effect on things is much higher than like – an Aaron Brooks, who's a four timer effect on things, or even a Carter, Sir- like Carter Sirachi is probably the most outspoken Penn State wrestler. And like the numbers really don't, like when we post a Carter Sirachi match, it's nothing really compared to when we post a Spencer Lee match. So that's why I don't know. I was God's country. <laughs> I, I think it's just, I think Iowa fans are like just more crazed and love it when they, and that, there's I mean, also, look at the, there's, I think it comes back to like just, Having a star like Spencer Lee was I was like, I don't want to say only star, but like he was like the star of the show, you know, whereas you have to share the stage a lot at Penn State. I know I kind of already said that, but yeah, no, no, for sure. But I mean, look at the crazy environment like Carver produces versus um, Penn State, like, you know, your Bryce Jordan Center, like it, it gets back to, you know. Maybe same number of fans, but the level of passion from Iowa fans is unmatched. Yeah. I think I think you see if Angelo Ferrari goes on to win national titles, I think you see him like He could up. obviously go heel. Uh, yeah. And I think he, he would will go right heel. <laughs> he will go He's heel. already gone heel, kind of. He has. And I think you see him blow up at Iowa. It Remember when he won Iron Man and put on his Instagram story F Blair mm-hmm. and flex on the Blair coaches? I need I need yep. that to happen at Iowa. Like, <laughs> I'm flexing on like Tom Ryan in the corner. Oh my god. And Instagramming F Tom Ryan. Speaking of which, he'll be on the show Thursday. <laughs> Tom Ryan will be on the show. Yeah, it's not, not Angel. Not, not Angel. Tom Ryan. No, will be on the show yeah. Thursday to talk about transfers in uh an IL and stuff so that'll be fun it's a tease it's what we in the business call a tease <laughs> uh there weren't that many questions but were there I got four questions two? um one that i didn't really understand but it's from our boy avery well i don't know if it's our boy jd wants to fight him but it said can you make a Who's squad me? I don't... <laughs> it's, can you make it i don't really fully understand this question but can you make a squad of only international wrestlers that can challenge for a team title I don't know if that means for an Olympic team title or if they're talking, if he's talking. NCAA? NCAA, That's the way I take it. NCAA? Like Uh, international guys who wrestle for other countries that. If you brought them into college, they could. Oh, that's that's what he means. They could win a team title. Um, If you you have to be college age. Yeah. (laughs) Well, what is college age? (laughs) Yeah. Up to twenty six, I believe. <laughs> I believe. These I feel like Zare could win. I don't know. Um, I don't know what are the rules for, for us. Like, if you never took a college course, can you then just come in at twenty two as a freshman? Yes. In some sports, you yeah. Brock Hardy did. Well, he wasn't twenty two, but he was like twenty. There might be rules for um, missions, like. Yeah, I think it's just the first day you start class. It's different. I looked into it. It's different sport to sport. It's different for each sport. Each sport has exceptions. Because like we learned, it was your clock starts the first as soon as you're enrolled in classes. You have a five year clock. Now COVID COVID switched that up a little bit. Yeah, but it depends on so like like uh, guys who play minor league baseball can they can like come back and then play football when they're in like like twenties. But I don't know if you can do that in other sports. But if you well, never entered college, 
I, th- I don't know. I think you can I'm come. Sure. I think you can enroll in school at any age and wrestle for that. I'm team. just saying. I'm saying maybe. I'm just saying, I'm maybe. Not sure. I feel like. And I know it's sometimes. I'm just gonna good. say yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Anybody? Uh, this is any I'm, international wrestler. There's anyone in the chat that can prove me otherwise. Now you, I'll delete your message. You need to give them a year of folk style training, because I think even even your best guys, if they're not folk style trained, like it's gonna be tough for them if they get underneath. Yeah. I feel like Zare could win right now. Yeah, I Heavy- mean, at heavyweight. He- he- especially heavyweight, like mm-hmm. when you're not getting cradled up. Yeah, really, probably you can. Mm-hmm. And then Tazunov, <laughs> he's, uh, he's college he, age. He wouldn't. I don't think he'd be able to make 197. Okay, fair. But yeah, maybe you'd have to get like an 86. Yeah. I don't know. Let's just pretend you can make 97. Fine. Again. In 86. Okay, do you think you would need to give them like a year, like insert okay. your top guys, your Yazdanis, Sitikovs? I think they they might win. I think they'd just win. They would yeah. just win. But what about that next kind of tier below? Yeah. You don't give them any folk style training. Name someone. You just plop them in like a Krugliev. Dude, I still think he so would. Good. I still think. Uh, but some of our guys are really good, like him versus Aaron Brooks. Yeah, that'd Something be a like match. that. That would be good. We're getting match. really good. Like our top guys, you know, maybe you go ahead. Yeah, Krugly, if you definitely put him in the finals, if we're just talking team score wise. Yeah, you put him in the finals. For sure. There's not somebody who can, like, take top and just. Yeah, maybe go, like, go, like. Go to work. Tanner Sloan. Yeah. Mm. Somebody can, like, toss boots on them, stall them out, because they, they just got nothing for them on bottom. It's a possibility. Yeah. If you give them zero folk style training. I mean, if you bring them in and literally just give them a season. Three-point yeah. takedown changes things, though, too, for this argument. I think it's easier at the upper weights, too. Like, I think it's tougher at the lower weights. Weightist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you heard it here. Yeah, yeah, you got to feel like Spencer Lee would be pretty much anyone in the world. Spencer Lee's no longer a college match. athlete. I know, but I'm saying like if you plugged in like right any of the but now like a Richie Figueroa mm-hmm. against like Aguilev and in, in folk, folk style. style on zero folk style training. Yeah, I uh, you got to go with Aguilev. I don't know. How far down do you go until you start? taken Mm -hmm. the college guy i don't know yeah i guess i don't really know how much of a difficult time these guys would have not getting like tilted like is a wrist tilt just so unfamiliar to them well even on the feet just start passing legs and stuff you know i don't know i don't know we're finishing finishing a single they're not used to guys just like rolling under and passing legs that kind of thing i think it's different at lower weights, where guys are a little more athletic. Yeah, I think so, too. I still probably give the edge to most of the international guys. Mm-hmm. So to answer Avery's question, yes. Yes, for sure you can. <laughs> to challenge for a team title, yes. I like that question. That was fun. Did I'm you make a team that beats it. Penn State? You definitely could if you just take all the number ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to f- – Yeah. You got to feel like these guys are such elite athletes. What about a just Russia versus folk just style. Penn State duel? Folk style. <laughs> folk style. <laughs> Who wins? Aguyev beats Braden Davis. Yeah. Abbas Gazi beats Nagao. Yeah. Nagao on top. Yeah, it could be. Ooh. It could be interesting. Mamadov, Bartlett. Mamadov. It's close. Mamadov. Uh, 70. But again, it's like, what if Bo rides him? Yeah, he would take. Well, like, what if he like rides him? him. So, okay, he rides him. He gets like a point for riding time and prevents a point. And a couple stallings, a couple. Yeah, let's be real. I feel like Haynes would win. Whoever Rush is not that great at seventy. Um, who was it? Sitikov versus um, <laughs> Mitchell. Mitchell. Ooh, yeah, it's fun. You favor Sitikov. Mitchell, yeah. I feel like not much mm-hmm. top. 
really. Uh, 79. Who's our 79? Uh, Uzmanov. Uzmanov. Uh, Uzmanov. Yeah. Uzmanov. World champ. Versus Carter. It's a match. First it's team match. all jacked match. I feel like Carter would ride him out. Yeah, folk style, I would go with Carter. Mm -hmm. Aaron Brooks. Or no, 86. Nefanov. Yeah. Nefanov versus Brooks. Nefanov wasn't the rep. Or it would be Nefanov versus. He was the rep at Euro Qualifier. Versus True X. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nefanov probably wins that match. Yeah. And then Brooks beats whoever is at 92. And, and then Greg probably beats their heavyweight. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like 5-5? Five, five? It's close. Yeah. It's fun. Penn State versus Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Folk style. Let's let's make it happen. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we only had four questions. One person said, do people immediately root as hard against those that wear headgear during freestyle matches as I do? <laughs> I don't root against them. <laughs> I Assuming this was a shot at uh, Thomas. Uh -oh. Or Kolodzik, right? Doesn't Kolodzik wear oh, yeah, Kolodzik headgear does. too? The uh the nerds the Northwestern and the Princeton, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Kids who, who well, they're both uh, they're both in JRTC, JRTC now, now, but it's uh, a JRTC thing. the guys who have to go on and probably actually have like a real career protecting their image. Yeah, I saw Israel Yaya's dad was like, yes, he he wants to. Yeah, I don't like it, but well, the know. other guy, their opponent, off. yeah, their opponent has Maybe the option. He did it to um, who did he do it to? David Taylor. Yeah, the 2014 was it, was U.S. David Open. David Taylor. Mm -hmm. David Taylor walked up with a headgear, and JB was like, "Take it off." That's so rough too, because you know David was wearing it because one of his ears was blown up, probably at the time. Yeah, probably because right after and the that college season. Sucks. Yeah. Um, who wins at? I don't. This is probably a Kozak question. Oh, I don't know, JD. You too. I don't want to diss your international knowledge. Who wins at 86? Aaron Brooks or Adam Satiev? Well, this is. Historical. This is a historical question. Yep. I don't know Adam Satiev that well, so I'm going to go Aaron Brooks. But I'll go. I, th I thought um, I like Satiev was smaller. I was going to say, I feel like Brooks would be way bigger. Too. Way bigger. Um, so, yeah, you go Brooks. But if they're the same weight, I, I'd probably go um, Satiev. And Adam is uh, Bouvesar's brother. Um, I want to say that Sean Bormet. My old coach had a, a match where he like almost beat Adam Satia or something. Like Adam was kind of insane. Cup. Like if you go and watch, he has like an insane highlight reel, super good with um, like inside trips, wizard kicks, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, which led to an insane um, highlight reel. He wasn't quite as good as his brother in terms of, uh, I mean, his brother's like the goat. <laughs> so, but he was still an Olympic champion. So. I forget. I think he won a couple world. I think he was like a world and Olympic champ. Yeah. Um, this is the last question. It, is Michigan going to become the new, in quotes, Iowa in the NIL age if they keep getting so many transfers? What and I think mean? by that they mean like the new pr like second place. Second best. So Adam was two-time world champ and one-time Olympic. That's it? That's it. <laughs> I guess he did compete some at. 85 but because that's where he won olympic gold was 85 wow but given the fact that he also i mean the year before he won it at 76 um worlds and aaron will likely move up to 97 after this from mm -hmm. the sounds of it you probably get the size advantage to to um to brooks i'm still gonna go i'm still gonna ride with adam okay so so Tyler, what was the question about Michigan though? Someone was basically asking if Michigan's going to become like the new second place team in the NIL age if they keep getting so many transfers. Mm, no, I think it's going to be a pretty big rotating door. I think you're going to see Michigan's transfers slow down soon too. They've also well, everybody's getting transfers. Yeah, it's not like that's what I'm saying. I don't know like why Michigan's Michigan gets so much flack. They had like one more transfer because than they Iowa got and Penn State because they get a lot of high level. Guys. Well, they got so yeah. many last year. Yeah, that's why <laughs> they got. They got what? Five? Had, we're all like established. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I actually take issue with people calling them. I think people call them mercenaries because they're only on the team for one year. But if you think about it, like they're only doing that because 
they're just taking guys who either who graduated from their last school. So I don't know. I but I do think that um, you're going to see a lot of Michigan is doing a pretty good job recruiting out of high school um, the last couple of years. So I think that especially with COVID slowing, like co- the COVID years going away, I think mm-hmm. you're going to see less less grad transfers at least. And and I think that. But yes, I think Michigan is going to be. <laughs> An amazing team for the years to come. I'm, I'm not saying uh, they're not going to like ever finish in second place again. They definitely could. It's they just I think that's going to be a pretty big road. It's not going to be a set. Yeah, I think they're going to finish in first place every it's, year from now on. The good, the thing is for for Michigan though is they have jumped to where like before it was like all right, just get like maybe they can get a trophy, and now it's almost it an feels like an expectation yeah, get over a the last year. Or it's a down year if they don't. It's a disappointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Right, Tyler? To me, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know you hate it, but you got to admit, the Michigan Mercenaries is is a great nickname. (laughs) So stupid. (laughs) (laughs) I just get frustrated because, like, I don't like people. I mean, I'm obviously insanely biased here, but I don't like people dogging Michigan for transfers when so many, like, the other, like, Iowa and Penn State had just as many transfers on their lineups or, like, one less or whatever. Yeah. So. I think you can give praise to like a school like Cornell for doing so well with no transfers, but I don't. I don't think that I would not. Even if Michigan had no transfers in the future and another team ahead of them had more transfers than them, I wouldn't dog that team for having transfers. That's kind of my transfers thing. Transfers is part of recruiting. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it's not like a low character thing at all, which a lot of people want to make it, which I think is just silly because your team's going to do it too, unless you're a a fan of an Ivy League team. It, it's similar to the whole guys transferring countries. Um, it, I don't think it makes you any less of anything, you know, character-wise, whatever. But it makes me appreciate the guys who didn't maybe a little more. Yeah. Right? Like a, you appreciate a Cornell a little more. You You don't knock the other teams for doing it doesn't take anything away from them they absolutely should Mm -hmm. you're crazy if you don't but then it also makes you appreciate teams that can't or won't or didn't a little more well i think the reason like the reason why people don't like it is they're like oh well you recruited these guys and now you're bringing bringing people in over them right and like you need to be loyal to your guy and so i think it that mindset and that opinion it obviously doesn't acknowledge the landscape has changed and it's not like okay you have your guys and those are your guys forever it's like no it's it's a different one of one of the different world interesting things at at world team trials last year was during the press conference jason nolf got asked a question about how kyle dake got brought into nlwc and he said that like he was frustrated at first but then he realized like his coach's job jobs are to bring in the best team as that possible that they can and his job is to make sure that there's nobody better than him or whatever it was like a really interesting perspective that I think a lot of people at Penn State at NLWC have been like forced to have because of just the nature of the success of the program and I think that any team that wants to compete with them is going to have to get used to that like Ed Ruth talked about how he felt like his job was never safe and that's like Ed Ruth we're talking you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like he had to be the guy or they would find someone else to be the guy. And so, I think so, that that's just like an edge that Penn state has. Like Michael Beard was an all American and they brought in uh, Max Dean over him. You get the luxury of that when you are the best program. Yes. Collegially and internationally where guys are going to think I have to be here to be my best. It's a little different if you're at a different program and you get recruited, recruited over, over and it's like, well, I can go somewhere else and be better. Maybe be an all eventually. or whatever, yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you, and I'm not saying it should be this way or it necessarily is, I do think um, there are right fits for people. I do think somebody can have more success somewhere other than Penn State than if they were mm-hmm. to go to Penn State. But the vast majority of people are going to think this is where I need to go 
to be my best because this is the best room with the best coaches. So if they get recruited over, yeah, well, I, I got to figure it out. I also want to say, if you'll let me defend my home team one more time, um, I, I do think that like the 2020 year was like kind of a punt year for Michigan. That's why I was on the starting lineup. Um, like they had a lot of guys Olympic redshirt and stuff. So they benefited a lot from the COVID extra year. So they kept a lot of these guys around. Stevan Michu's, Logan Massa, Miles Amin. Um, there's, there's more I want to say. But like they kept a lot of these guys around um, for like seven years. And a lot of their money was tied up with these guys. It kept them from being able to go recruit kids out of high school. Yeah. And I think that you saw a little bit of a transition period for a couple of years where they're pulling guys from the portal they, where to like kind of ha- make sure they had a lineup. But I think you're going to see as the, that – cycle like comes back through i think you're gonna see them go for less transfers and if they keep going for transfers i don't care either yeah <laughs> well and and even even like to what both of you guys are saying if you're an athlete at michigan and you're whatever a true freshman or getting recruited there and you're like wouldn't you want your coaches to want to be the best team in the country like wouldn't you want to see them do like try to bring in somebody or try to bring in training partners that are going to make your team better and then, rather than just be like no we're we're good like we could we could have other people here that are gonna you know maybe challenge for all american or win titles but like no nah, we don't need them like we're we're, we're good it's like no you want to be the best like right, you want to be coached guy by guys that that want to be the best so i feel like that's like the mindset you have to, mm-hmm. you, have yeah, to you, have. you have to have it I, I think people who really don't like the transfer portal and the idea of the transfer portal teams that use it is because it, it takes away from the the idea of you go somewhere, you put in your time, your hard work, mm-hmm. you get your reward. It, it, it just, it's kind of a the rich get richer type thing. Um, you can buy your team. It, 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 it's putting down the little man type right. that, that, mentality where now it's not just hard work and mm-hmm. grit and determination that can, which I don't think is the case, but that's kind of what that the yeah. transfer portal embodies. That's why people hate it. But like it works the same the other way. And we know that right where you see programs like Ryder or Lock, Lock Haven, Haven where guys maybe do get recruited over and then they're like, all right, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to go to a program that's going to take me and wants me and then I'm going to earn all American. And that's kind of like what I was talking about where I think there is fit for a lot of people. Bryce Meredith talked a lot about it when he left NC state, went to Wyoming. He was like, I benefited a lot from being the guy. I got the time and attention that I deserved Mm -hmm. being the best guy on the team Yeah, where I wasn't just another guy. And, you know, obviously a, a, a backup even um, compounds mm-hmm. that exponentially. Ex, yep. Exponentially. That's, that's right. the word I was saying. <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. It's been an hour and a half. I don't know if you guys, you have anything. We got to get out of here. We got we to gotta, uh, suns and moons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got to celebrate the eclipse day, baby. We're in the path of totality. <laughs> yeah. Not in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> no, yes, in Texas. Yes, in Texas. Yes, in Austin too um hopefully those clouds peak out but uh thank you guys for tuning in um thank you ben for joining um even if it was only for 30 minutes i'll make sure he gets docked for them yes he didn't Mm -hmm. dock his pay doc christian's pay entirely yep um (laughs) we can just take this as his fantasy payment yeah there you go there you go right I don't know why he didn't just uh, take a late late flight home, do the Ben method, but he wants to get home probably to uh, go look at uh, the Eclipse Mm -hmm. or something. So we're going to go check out the Eclipse. We'll be back Thursday with Coach Tom Ryan. See you then. Love you.